Well, if you didn't know what a solution was before, you certainly know now that you've listened to Mr. Edmonds' song. I found that looking on YouTube for something else. I thought it was really funny, so I thought I'd include it with talking about water and solutions. We've been doing a lot of work in class the last few days about water, talking about hydrogen bonds and talking about uh, cohesion and how water sticks together because of hydrogen bonds and some things that you can do to make it less cohesive. And so we're going to go from that into talking about solutions and, uh, and why those are important, why water is so important to living things. You know, of course, that water is important to all living things. You have to have water to drink. You get too thirsty. If you're out there working out, running around, uh, you get thirsty, you need some water. Well, all living things need water. Even the things that live in very dry areas still need water. Water is necessary to everything living. So we're going to talk about why that is and some special properties of water that makes that uh, makes it a good thing for a living things to have. So there are a number of life supporting properties of water. If you've read chapter two, uh, the last part of chapter two, as you've been assigned, then you should already know some of this. Uh, water is important to all living things for several reasons. First of all, moderation of temperature. Um, the uh, lower density of ice is very important to living things. Water is the solvent of life. It's called the universal solvent, and that's important to living things. And then also because living things are sensitive to acid and basic conditions, understanding water and how water works um, helps us uh, make sure that we are re we have the the capability of reacting properly or understand how we react to acids and bases. So one thing at a time. Okay, moderate water uh, resists changes in temperature largely because of the hydrogen bonds. When you form hydrogen bonds, that releases heat. And uh, it takes a lot of heat added back in to break the hydrogen bonds. Since there are so many hydrogen bonds in water, that increases the amount of heat required to break them. If you've ever heated water on the stove, you know the pan gets hot a lot sooner than the water does. And so hot enough to burn you a lot sooner than the water does. It's because there's a lot of heat required, not very much required to make metal hot, but there is a lot of water required to make water, a lot of energy required to make water hot because of the hydrogen bonds that are present. It takes a lot of energy. Even though they're weak, even though they're the weakest of the bonds we've talked about, it still takes a lot of energy to break them. Uh, another thing that's important about water for living things is the density of ice. You know that ice floats in water in watery solutions. This is because also because of hydrogen bonding. bonding. When water is in the liquid state, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, the, in the liquid water, there are hydrogen bonds that exist between the water molecules, but they're constantly forming and breaking from one molecule to the other because the molecules are moving around quite a bit more. And so, you know, they move away a little bit and break that hydrogen bond, but then they get closer to another water molecule and form a new one. So they're always, always moving uh, and always reforming hydrogen bonds, breaking and reforming. In ice, the molecules are less densely, in, in ice, the hydrogen bonds form as stable bonds because the molecules are moving around less. Whenever you cool something, the molecules are moving more slowly. And as they slow down, the, the hydrogen bonds that form between the water molecules are stable bonds. As a result of this, they don't break and reform all the time like they do in liquid water, and this causes the molecules to form in a nice pattern. You can see over here in this diagram, they're in a nice hexagonal pattern here because of the shape of the water molecule and where the charges are located. And uh, it's, they stay that way. Now, a lot of people think that there's because of this, there's a lot of air trapped in ice, which is why it floats. And that's not really true. It's not really air. It's just space between the mo molecules. The molecules are more evenly spaced, less densely packed. And that's what makes ice less dense, which means that ice floats. Now, why is that important for living things? Well, if you're a fish living in a pond in a cold climate and the water freezes, Notice that it freezes only on top and the liquid water stays underneath. It forms an insulating layer protecting the liquid water, allowing the life forms in the water to survive the cold temperatures. If ice did not float, if it sank to the bottom, then the whole pond would freeze over and it would kill everything or most everything that was in the pond because most things can't live frozen. So it's very important to living things that ice does float. It's a very, very important uh, factor that, I, that water has. 
Another thing that's important about water is that it is the solvent of life. It's a very versatile solvent, mostly due to its polarity. Uh, pol polar solutes dissolve easily in water. And charged solid solutes, ionic solutes, dissolve easily in water. Uh, both of these things, both of these kind of things, and anything that dissolves in water forms a type of solution called an aqueous solution. If you speak Spanish or take Spanish, you know aqua or agua is the word for Spanish, and aqua means water, and so aqueous means water, water solution. Um, in ionic solutes, when they dissolve, they dissociate or separate from each other. The ions separate. You can see in the diagram over here that chlorine and sodium ions separate, and they're both surrounded by molecules of water. Notice that the molecules are oriented differently. The positively charged hydrogen parts of the molecule are more closely oriented toward the negatively charged chloride ion and the negatively charged oxygen part of the water molecule is more closely um, arranged toward the positively charged sodium ion. Okay, this is really important. That's what makes salt water a really good conductor of electricity uh, is because it can, it can travel um, more easily through, the, the charges can travel more easily through that ionic solution because of the charged particles that are present in it. Another thing that's important about water is uh, the acid and base conditions. Now, in an aqueous solution, not only do the ionic molecules separate and dissociate like we saw with the sodium chloride, but also a small percentage of the water molecules break apart into ions. When they break apart, they form a positively charged hydrogen ion and a negatively charged hydroxide ion, which is shown as OH minus. So each molecule of water that separates or dissociates forms two ions, one hydrogen ion, one hydroxide ion. Now, the vast majority of the oxygen mo uh, water molecules don't dissociate, but some of them do. Some compounds dissolved in water that release hydrogen ions into the solution are called acids. They are acidic in composition. Compounds that release hydroxide ions to a solution are called basic. And the pH scale is, how we, is what we use to describe how basic or acidic a solution is. Now, if it's just water and the ions and some of the water molecules are dissociating into those ions, you can see you're going to have an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So that's how you end up with a neutral solution. If you have a solution that has more hydrogen ions, then hydroxide ions, you're going to have a solution that is called acidic. So you can see here if we have lemon juice, in water or just a lemon juice solution, that's going to be acidic because the lemon juice produces more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. The water here is a is a neutral solution. There are equal numbers of oxygen, I mean hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Another thing I want to point out in these diagrams before I go any further is the numbers of ions that are shown here are just for illustration purposes. That has nothing to do with the actual numbers of those ions that are present. It's just to show you that there's relatively more hydrogen ions here than, than hydroxide ions and relatively more hydroxide ions in the bleach than there are hydrogen ions, which makes it a basic solution. So lemon juice is an acid, vinegar would also fall in here, a number of other compounds, including milk and things like that, are acidic. And then basic solutions would, it would be things like bleach, but it would also include things like seawater, which is also a basic solution. The pH scale ranges from 1 to 14. Now, I know you've probably learned some things about the pH scale in the past. On the pH scale, 7 is neutral, that's pure water, because you have equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. pH values that are under 7 are acidic. They have more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. pH values over 7 are basic because they have more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. Now you're going to learn more in chemistry next year about what those numbers actually mean. Okay, all we need to know for biology is that if it's got fewer hydrogen ions, then it's going to be basic, and if it has more, hydro more hydrogen ions, it's going to be acidic. Another thing you need to know in biology is that each number on the scale, the pH scale, represents 10 times as many hydrogen ions as the next higher number. For instance, if you have uh, a pH, something that's a pH of 3 compared to something that's a pH of 4, 
the substance with a pH of 3 is going to have 10 times as many hydrogen ions as the substance with pH 4. That's what that means, the 10 times as many. Now, there are compounds that are found in living things and other substances as well that are called buffers. Buffers are important because they minimize changes in pH. As you can imagine, a big change in pH is going to be very harmful to cells. So buffers are really important for cells. They have buff lots of natural buffers that occur in cells all the time. A buffer accepts hydrogen ions when there is excess acid present to keep it from being harmful to the cell. And in, sub in times when there is excess base in the solution, they donate hydrogen ions. So they'll help neutralize, the, the, they'll prevent a sharp, sudden change in pH, which could be harmful to the cell. And that's all. Now, uh, following this, there's another video um, that's another song about acids and bases. It's just kind of fun. And then there's another quiz. So be sure and do that. So write your summary, do the quiz, and we will talk more in class.